Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to today's Advent Calendar and Merry Christmas. Because nothing's a Christmas like this scenery, right? I mean, just how Christmassy it looks. Better yet, look at that sunset. But again, this is where I grew up in, in East Yuma County. That's Antelope Hill back there. So, for those who might know. But yeah, nice, beautiful pink sunset. There's the moon. And I thought I'll start out with a Christmas. This first part of the video, I'll do a Christmas story, I thought. Or more so, a story about the Gila River. World War I or II and some Germans. Honestly, it has nothing to do with Christmas, but let's go with it, so. Anyway, so, what happened? Around Chandler, uh, holding my phone in the sh shot here, uh, around Phoenix, southern Phoenix Chandler, there was a POW camp during World War I or II. Again, citation needed for all the story. Everything I say needs citation, so. So the Germans in this POW camp got a hold of a map at one point and discovered there is the Gila River, or Gila if you want to mispronounce it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it, by the way, a lot of deer tracks here, that it flowed nearby them and all the way to the Colorado. There's some birds migrating to the Colorado and then went down to the Gulf of California into Mexico where their dreams will be to become the world's first German mariachi band possibly I don't know what they wanted to do but I like to think that was the thing so they got they the plan was to steal an inflatable raft or lifeboat which was there at the camp get out of jail or jail prison whatever you want to call it hop the fence whatever and go to the river and float down to freedom all the way down to Mexico. So, one night they achieved their goal of getting the boat and then they broke out. They went out and they saw this roughly on the edge, which is a lot of salt cedars, which aren't natural to this area, by the way, and a lot of cottonwoods and stuff. They broke through the brush and what did they see? Well, here, let me run and show you what they saw. They saw the Gila River, which is what's right in front of me. The mighty, mighty Gila River. Yep, for those who don't know, not every river has water in it. Now, this is much more <laughs> southwest of where they were, but it's the same thing. This is the mighty Gila River. So, the Germans in the story which by the way actually did happen, but they, some of them, just threw their hands in the air, turned around, and walked back to the camp to surrender themselves. The rest, is that actually deer down there? No, it's stumps, anyways. There are some continued down to Gila Bend, which actually is over there. Some of them gave up along the way. The last uh, soldier made it all the way to Gila Bend, which is a long walk, by the way, especially in a dry riverbed. He made it all the way there. He found a boy playing in the, you know, around the river edge. He asked where his parents were because he wanted to surrender to his parents. He said the parents were off working, so he ended up surrendering to the boy. Because <laughs> trust me, a couple days of no water and walking in this off stuff, you'll be willing to surrender to anyone. So, yeah. So I thought, you know, just a nice story that has to do with this lovely river that I grew up next to. By the way, when I was a kid, this actually did flow little bit here and there. The real reason is there's a couple dams upstream and not only that a uh, low snowfall in New Mexico is really what causes this to be dry most of the time. Every what three years this runs and they have to by the way if you notice the road there was cut so there's a lot of roads that go into this river because it's dry most of the time but every like I said once every five three years they have to cut the roads and let the water run so I mean, there's some cement roads that are built into this river because it never flows, so. But yeah, as a kid, we used to float down this thing occasionally. But, and also there was a flood one year that actually flooded all of the uh, north side of uh, the river, of the valley, rather. So, so there's my thing. We're still recording. Yay. So, today, shot. Uh, Hard to do this two-handed. Let me set the camera down in the riverbed. I mean, it's not like it's going to get any water damage. Uh, today's shot is Vita Divine Peppermint Snops. 
30% volume by, ooh, ooh, I thought it was 15%. So this is a bit stronger than I was reckoning for. Hmm. Oh, well, I am just, like I said, a mile or so away from my parents. So it's not gonna be a long drive, but I thought I'd do it here to show you guys. <sighs> One thing a lot of your parents have, a lot of Europeans have misconceptions about in the America Southwest, not all rivers flow to the ocean. This one used to, but yeah. Actually, there are some rivers in uh, Nevada. Interesting uh, Oregon Trail stories that there are rivers up north in Nevada, that direction, that actually don't flow, even when they have water, don't flow to the, uh, the ocean. So anyways, let's see what this is. It's peppermint snops, and again, it's stronger than I thought. I thought it'd be 15%, like tomorrow's, or rather later on, the second part of this video, so. Yeah, it smells like snops. Uh, peppermint, a little bit there. <clears throat> yeah, nice and peaceful. Uh, what you're hearing over there is a crop dust. No, it's a tractor. Because this is farmland, by the way. Either side of this is nothing but farmland, so. Just with this one river, mining through it. So, uh, ah, there's a peppermint. Very strong peppermint now. Gotta let my nose clear a little bit, so. So, here's to unsuspected... <laughs> Uh, things not being what you thought they would be. So, uh, yeah. And of course, again, happy Christmas, but there's gonna be a second part of this video, but anyways, two unsuspecting uh, surprises. Quite good. Yeah. See all the steps I've took here. Okay, there's a little bit of warmth, but nothing to note. No burning, no nothing, but it is distinctly, let me push that down, distinctly uh, peppermint. Think of those cheap candies you get during this time of year, or you see year round at like say doctor offices, the white with the red ones, this is peppermint candies. Exactly what it smells like. Look at this, what is this? Looks like a coyote or, no, well hold on. A one tooth, yeah it's a little coyote or a kid fox. See, yeah, that's interesting. In England, I've seen people, they have these beautiful red foxes. Here in the desert, they're more gray. Oh, well. Anyways, so, what was I? Oh, yeah. So, it's it was, a, like, after you're done eating one of those peppermint candies, that aftertaste that stays in your mouth is what it really tastes like. So, it tastes like peppermint. There's no strong alcohol taste. There's no burn. So... Pretty nice. How am I going to get back up here? Be funny if I get stuck, uh, mm, bit by a rattlesnake while recording, so. Anyways, I need to get home quick. Mm. Yeah, see, here's all the, actually, that three paws. That might be a fox, then. Hmm. Anyways, all lights of critters like to roam around here, especially when there's water, but. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So this... Thought I'd show you guys what the mighty Gila River looks like nowadays. And hey, there's still a beautiful sunset there for you to see. Uh, and I'm out of breath from just, again, it's because I have, I want to get out so much information, I talk too fast and I cause myself to get winded just by speaking too fast. So I need to slow down, which is one reason I drink while recording. It does actually help me slow down my pace of talking, so. Uh, anyways, so, again, there's going to be a second part to this video, so I'll see you then. Otherwise, until then, let's go on to today's games. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Merry Christmas! Ah, Merry Christmas. Today, we took our shot of liquor, and if I'm doing this right, and I assume I still am, uh, I'm going to do a shot at the beginning, and then I'll play two games and do a shot at the end. So that would be my 26 days type thing. So today we're doing the game that was meant for Christmas Eve and then the day for Christmas also. So anyway, so today's advent calendar game is you got three. Get three to score points. Watch out for the timer. So let's see what this is all about. Oh, a fudge timer. Ah, uh, it's one of these. Shite, I'm too drunk for this. And I can't do up and down? No, I can't. All right, timer's up. Uh, hold on a second. I'm very professional. I don't know if you know this. Mm. Okay, here we go. 
Oh, I got three. I wasn't paying attention, but I got three somehow. Uh, blue. See, I need to look up and down also. Shite, 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 shite. Uh, here. Dang it. Anyways. So this is a nice, simple, but jewel type game. Oh, nice. I got dueled there. Uh, duel, rather. Uh, duh, 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 duh. here. And if I can get rid of that one somehow. Uh, here. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that skills. Four even. Amazing. I am truly fantastic and I love my... Anyways, what? Here we go. I'm getting lucky on this stuff. Okay. But yeah, it's hard to talk and do this. Shit, timer's getting faster. Timer's getting faster. I'm panicking. Oh, I panicked. Uh, it's Hoonie Pop without the boobs. Anyways, no, actually, Hoonie Pop's a bit um, unrealistic in the boobs. Not, oh, no. Yeah, of course in the boobs. But what I mean is uh, in the gameplay. Because you can move a piece anywhere. So it's not like this where they have to be next to each other. You can move them across the screen and stuff. So that's what I mean by it's a bit... Uh, timer's up. Unrealistic. But yeah. So today's Christmas Day. How have you guys' Christmas been so far? Spending it with loved ones uh, down here? Or are you uh, just relaxing at home, drinking some eggnog? Uh, actually, here's a question for you. And I think I asked it last year, but I'll ask it again. I'll probably ask it next year. Uh, wow, I am drinking. Ask it next year. Still sound drunk on that one. Uh, did you guys... Oh, yeah, the question. Because I ask a lot of people this, because it always intrigues me. The way... Because the way you do things as a kid is the... This one guy here. Is the way you assume everyone does stuff. So, at our house, we used to... Out of time. We used to open up... And we still do when we're back home. Uh, open up presents on Christmas Eve. And what that was is we opened up the presents from the family members and parents. Uh, shoot. Oh, there. I saw the blue. On Christmas Eve. So that's when you opened up the presents from your uh, mom, dad, and uncle. Humans, essentially. And then on Christmas. So on Christmas Eve, you'd open up the presents. We'd usually have like a little snack dinner on that. Like, uh, um, shoot. Where's a good one? Uh, here. Uh, so say like uh, finger food type stuff uh, on that night. Uh, shoot. But you'd again, we'd open up presents from humans. Then the kids would have to go to bed by X o'clock, whatever, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And at night, then Santa would come by and drop off his presents and we would open those up on Christmas morning. So again, we open up the presents from relatives, family members, humans on Christmas Eve and at uh, Christmas morning we'd have stuff in our stockings as well as presents from Santa so that's the way I always well, is that the same for you guys because again as you became an adult and interacted with other humans and as you know my brothers and sisters uh, got married to other people uh, because I'm still single ladies anyways one of you guys have to sacrifice yourself for the greater goods of others anyways <laughs> Um, yeah, I, you know, realized other traditions and stuff like that, like, <laughs> made it, uh, like that whole Christmas Eve versus Christmas Day, uh, right here. Oh, dang it. If I went up, it would have been, uh, Christmas versus Christmas Eve. So, yeah. So what do you guys do? And by the way, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. So we go from Christmas Eve to Christmas Day. Yay. So again, like I said, I'm playing two games today. And doing two shots today. So, mm. ah, let's move on to zany gifts. Carefully organize the gifts into the right area. So, yeah, again, gifts. I always wonder how many people... Wrapping paper. Bombs? Gifts. Uh, what? Oh. Oh, I see. Okay. So bomb, that's a bomb. That's a bomb. And that's a bomb. Okay, yeah. Because I always wondered about, because 
like when my brother-in-law, a couple of Christmases up at my place, uh, on Christmas Eve even, he had uh, Santa come by in the outfit and drop off presents to the kids. So when we grew up, we never had Santa physically visit. He was always at night while we were asleep. So, but yeah, he, uh, he, uh, don't let your kids listen to this part. He would dress up as Santa, come by and bring kids for a uh, present for the kids. So, uh, but yeah, uh, he, uh, that was his tradition growing up. But yeah, we never had that. Well, again, we, Santa always came at night. So, but yeah, that was, again, that was our routine. And it made sense to me as a kid, you know, you open up the gifts from your human relatives at night. And then that morning, Santa dropped off his presents. So, but again, like I said, the way you grew up is the way you assume life was. So I always wonder how other people did their stuff. Like, did you open up half your presents on Christmas Eve and then half the other half on Christmas morning? So, but yeah, I, um, that's the way we did it. And I think I uh, kind of still do from some part. Mm. Oh, hold on a second. Talk among yourselves. Mm. Ask yourself who really gives a lamp as a present other than that guy from A Christmas Carol. Mm. Anyways, okay. So, yeah. Whew, excuse me. Minor heart attack there. Oh, it's getting a little bit faster. Okay, and that's a bump. But, yep, yep, yep. And all that, how has your Christmas been so far? You know, mine is usually always relaxing, having fun, taking that last shot for you guys. So... But yeah, yeah. And again, we, like I said, we always had that snack meal. I remember a couple of Christmases, we had KFC. Again, just kind of finger food. Uh, for, um, I've got zero points. Have I been playing this right? Oh, I see. I've been talking to you guys and not even knowing what I'm doing. Oh, well, let's just end the game because I'm too far behind. Okay, I see. I thought I was doing it right by going left and right. Okay, let's do this again. Sorry. <laughs> I've been ranting about Christmas Eve and not realizing what I needed to do. Okay, so I need to actually throw the presents back and forth. So so this is a toy for little Timmy. So let's pick this up. Oh, what was that? Shoot. Oh, well. Nope, that was a bomb. That was a present, I think. That's a bomb coming. So this is a bomb. We don't want to send bombs to the wrong people. So, as a matter of fact, let's just send the bombs back into the trash heap because no one deserves that. Everyone deserves to have a nice, happy Christmas. This was a lamp. Again, who gives a lamp as a present? Actually, that's the funny thing. They still sell those that leg lamp as a present. Which actually, there's a question for you on Christmas Day. What's the weirdest gift you've been given? And I guarantee you, for most of you, it's from your grandmother. Because it's always the elderly that gives you those really weird presents, you know. The ones that um that they see on TV. Great for teenagers of all ages, by the way. Let me get some of these guys out. Do I get more points for doing it quicker? Or, by the way, that was a bomb, I think. Or is it just 50 points for all bombs? That's the bomb. Anyway. Okay, so the top one's a bomb. That was, I think, a present. That was a bomb. That was a bomb. That's a bomb. And it's a bomb coming up. All right, quickly. Again, I don't want it to stack up like it did last time, and I don't know what's what. Oh, I played the game wrong because I was too busy talking about. But yeah, the weirdest present I think I got. I don't know. All my presents have been pretty normal, uh, relatively speaking. I mean, I always got general stuff that was normal for us um pocket knives uh cologne you know the usual usual stuff grandma never got us anything too weird like said a dead cat or anything like that anyways these two are gifts that's a bomb that's a gift that's a bomb 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 gift bomb oh boy this is getting hectic That was a bomb. That was a gift. That was a bomb. That's a gift. 
That's a bomb. Shoot, let's just give what I got here. That was wrong. By the way, you get more points for gifts than bombs. There we go. Ah, that was the wrong one. Ah! See, so it does get faster on you. I thought I just had to do it stand under stuff. But, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Like I said, never really anything too strange. I actually... The strangest thing I could think of off the top of my head is, and I still have it, is a um, gutter. I What I mean is a knife designed specifically for gutting uh, animals. I don't hunt much. I mean, my family, we do hunt a lot uh, traditionally, but I haven't been hunting in ages. As a matter of fact, I don't have a gun in the house. Mainly because I don't have a gun safe. So... But yeah, it's weird to get a gutter because I don't fish and uh, hunt at all much. But it's a nice, it's a nice knife. But I mean, I already have my pocket knife, and any hunting knife, really, I don't have much use for right now. So, but I mean, nothing too weird, like say an ugly sweater or anything like that. I mean, we all got the traditional socks and stuff. My cousins, I know, they always used to play pranks. Here, let me get rid of these two on their uh, husbands. By the way, these two are presents. Shoot, come on, quick. Uh, by getting them, like, they get a PS, uh, they get a PlayStation. And they would get the PlayStation box, but they would fill the PlayStation box with a sweater. And then hand that to them, so. But, of course, they would give them the real PlayStation after they got upset. You know, that kind of joke gift. But I can't think of any too many weird gifts. Because normally I give gift cards or wine. Uh, or, well, to like a, there's one family member that I don't know what to get, so I just get her wine. But um, uh, but yeah, normally oh, I think these are both gifts. Come on, these are all gifts. Fudge, I messed up. It's getting too hectic. Just like the holiday season. Let's just throw this away. I'm just guessing now. All right, that was guessing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Never too much uh, weird gift giving. But then again, like I've given science kits to my nieces and nephews because I used to love those as kids. I don't know if they love them, but yeah, this year I got them um, some gaming stuff since they like it. So, mm. Mm. Ah. anyways, I've been rambling on too much. I asked you a lot of questions because this was two videos in one. Again, I took a shot in the beginning, and then I asked you, do you open presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or both? Uh, what's the routine around that? Because, again, like mine was humans on Christmas Eve, Santa on Christmas morning. And what was the weirdest gift you got? Kind of, you know, like weird thing from a relative that didn't quite understand you or, you know. Mm. Like I said, I, the first thing off the top of my head was I did get that gutter. Again, the knife with a little backward blade so you can just pull across a, a belly to uh, gut an animal. So, lovely thought for Christmas Day, isn't it? Anyways, but yeah, that that and um, my mom keeps getting me books. So, but that's pretty typical. Uh, last year, <laughs> she got me 101 mixed drink recipes. So... I think my family's finally accepting my life choices as an alcoholic. <laughs> but yeah, so what was a weird Christmas present you got as a kid or an adult? So, uh, otherwise, I would say, normally I would say that's it for today, but let's go on to the final drink of the Advent calendar. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome again to the end part of this video. Again, that's about the, what, the third time in a row I said that so far in this video? Anyways, so out here, and let's see, yep, by the way, I adjusted my camera so it's just pointing straight out my uh, forehead. So we can still, you can see this view. One of my, one of the places I love to come walking actually, 
used to do this during college. I think I said this last year too, because this is the same spot uh, that I finished off last year's advent calendar. So oh, there's a nice plane. You hear them going by of stuff. This is a um, from Yuma to Phoenix. This is the flight path they take. Little uh, puddle jumpers, not puddle jumpers, but um, yeah, still almost the same thing. Just like little 50 seaters or whatever. That and over there, that mountain range right back there, the one in the back, is actually the edge of YPG, Yuma Proving Ground. It's an army military base. So every so often you do see planes from there flying around and hearing them. And also hearing loud explosions because it's a bombing range also. As well as behind that mountain in the far distance is the mil uh, Marine base. So they bomb over there too. So this is kind of wedged between, uh, well, where I grew up, Welton, which is, uh, again, I might have covered this all last year, but alcohol affects memory. Um, let's see, so yeah, that's Welton right there. So that's Welton, that's Welton Hills, that's Telegraph Pass, that's, Anna, uh, no, that's Banker's Tank. Antelope is over here on, yeah, that mountain right there behind that hill there is Antelope Hill where I went to high school. So that's where I grew up in the, in the district up there. Uh, that's Walton where I went to elementary school and that's where I went to high school. So the rest is just farmland. Sorry, I can't really see with the sun there glaring my eye. But yep, yep. So again, nothing says Christmas like the Sonoran Desert and a buzzard. Waiting for me to die. Look at that guy just flying around. I wonder if he found something to eat. Anyways, actually, standing around here, you might hear gunfire occasionally. Uh, it's produce season. And actually, I've seen about five or so. Uh, they hire guys just to walk around with shotguns or some kind of guns and just essentially fire every so often just to scare uh, birds and stuff off the crops. So at night, sorry, adjusting there, you'd actually just hear poof. Poof. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's his growing season. It's lettuce season. So you can see the farmer out there, tractor watering. Actually, no, that's that guy's on the road. Oh, he's actually watering down the road. So, uh, and let's see. There's some water over there. Oh, that's sprinklers. By the way, earlier on, see all the growth there, kind of wiggling around that. That's actually the Gila, also right there. So. Also completely dry, so yeah, I had to tilt too far down. You can see too much of the river, but that's right. Yeah, there's antelope over there. But again, this area, I, uh, what I was saying, I used to love hiking, or hiking, you know, quotation marks, walking around here when I was in college. Cause I just come back here, it's easy to park. Lots of nails on the ground. Um, oh, here comes someone. All right, so where was I? Sorry, just someone passing by. I didn't want to get them on camera without their permission. You know, laws being what it is. Uh, yeah, oh, there's another plane coming by. I told you it's a popular, uh, again, all the flights from Yuma go pretty much to Phoenix, so. Uh, yeah, this is where I used to, in college, come back here, park right here, easy to park, and walk up to that mountain hill right there, that little ridge there. And actually up there, the little round circles, uh, cement stabs. Uh, slabs in the ground with a uh, surveyor marks on them so this was part of the survey line to figure out where the border used to be or is I forget wh how old they are so but yeah like I said it's all desert through there we used to go hunting or well all over this place uh, but yeah up uh, along the YPG edge there there's a bunch of water holes that the uh, Game and Fish keeps up for uh, the deer to water from. So if you know where they are, you know where the deer usually end up. But nice, relaxing day out in the desert. Everyone's, what's with all the buzzards? Is there something out there I don't know? Uh, usually when you see buzzards, you see, they, you know, that something's dead out there. Ah, just listen to that wind. Hopefully you can hear me over the wind. I didn't think about that. But anyways, let's move on to today's final shot uh, so let's see here today oh and actually let me grab what I do with it it's right here 
because I need to adjust. So if I look down, there we go. You can kind of see. So today's shot is Sweet Retreat Apple Pie Liquor. So, see what this thing. Hey, look, there's an actual crop duster. Tilt up so you can see him again. I'm gonna have to adjust again, but yeah. I'm almost, I'm somewhat level with him at this height. He's actually probably gonna park over at my dad's place. They have a little, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, airstrip behind their property. And that's a pleasant surprise. Yeah, he's gonna work all throughout the holidays. They don't get days off, so. The crops grow and they need to be dusted. So, anyways, uh, so back to where we were. There we go. Another one. They're just not gonna let me do my video. There's gonna be a third one behind them. By the way, so that probably is the guy that lives behind my parents' place. Or not behind, it has airship because he has a couple planes that actually flies, uh, like he has kids up in Flagstaff and he flies his personal plane back and forth. Actually, that one's not a crop. It is a crop. That looks like one of those old ones from, uh, can you guys really see that with the glare? Huh, yeah, that one actually looked almost like an old biplane. But as a crop duster. Now, is there going to be a third one or can I take my shot now? All right. All these interruptions. Anyway, so pointing down there. Again, all this glare is not helping much. So, anyway, so again, anyone? Last chance. All right. Uh, today is Sweet Retreat Apple Pie Liqueur. I already said that once, twice, three times a lady. So, it's another one of these liqueurs. I tried the peach cobbler earlier in the advent, and of course, ooh, 20%. See, that one had 15, this one has 20, so each of them has a little bit more alcohol. Anyways, apple pie liqueur. So, nothing says Christmas like apple pie. Mm. But yeah, hopefully, again, like I said several times, hopefully you're enjoying your uh, Christmas with loved ones and family. Somewhere warm, comfortable, and not out here in the desert. <laughs> nah, this is actually quite nice. It's only, uh, what, 62 Fahrenheit. So let's see. Uh, I wouldn't describe it as apple pie. I would describe it as apple liquor. Yeah, apple liquor is a good description of the smell. So here's the coming home for Christmas. Okay, not a warm flush, nothing warm really going down the throat or anything. It's kind of mellow, very mellow. The taste of apple and sugar is there and it goes down smooth. There's even like a little hint of what I want to describe as, um, as um, whipped cream at the tail end of that. So kind of an interesting little taste there at the end of just let me adjust you back up so you can see the view. Just a nice little aftertaste of like whipped cream, which is quite good. By the way, open container law in Arizona, I can now be arrested for having this in my vehicle. So even though it's only 20%, but still don't drink and drive. I'm like I said, just right next to my parents' place. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. Again, I grew up here in the desert, love the desert. Especially during winter, it's easy to be out here. When it's summer and it's 120, it's a whole nother story. But yeah, it's actually nice just to occasionally walk out there. Because over that ridge, you can see a bit more of the valley. Uh, well, no, the valley's this way, but um, see a bit more of the desert there. Because interesting, there's a giant wash. And I know I said it with an R. In my mind, wash, like the desert thing, it has an R in it, even though it's spelled the same. But I do wash my clothes, but this is a wash. So anyways, uh, big one there. Actually, it's supposed to empty out into the river. So they changed it into a giant parking lot for a, a SRP, I think. Mm. But beautiful blue skies. There's another buzzard. There must be something out there they're all heading towards. So 
Uh, but it's nice. You can just sit here and listen. Of course, occasionally you hear gunfire because of the uh, farmers out there. So it's just odd to see like these guys patrolling the fields with a shotgun. It's like they're trying to protect their crops from people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, good old. You know, like I said, Baker's tanks out there. There's some beautiful stuff out there. I'm hoping to do a shaky vlog out there uh, tomorrow in celebration. Oh yeah, see here's a little bit of a wash. And again, that would go out all the way to the river if it wasn't for the farmland here. So, uh, Telegraph Pass. Yeah, Yuma's on the other side there. That's Walton, Antelope, and then off that way is Phoenix. Give you an idea of where I am, kind of. So, uh, but yeah, again, I'll used to go camping out here, but mainly out near Dayton. But this is where I grew up. Ah, nice and quiet. Definitely not like Phoenix. So, anyways, so that's it. And that's the end of the advent calendar. Another year in the books. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed this. Because I know I enjoy testing all the liquor. Even though a lot of it has been liqueurs and flavored stuff. But, I got to try it. So, that's what I wanted to do. Was try different types of alcohol. Next year, we'll see. Again, at some point, I'm going to run out of stuff to try. So... <laughs> At some point, I'm just going to have to get exotic stuff from other places to try. Oh, well. That's if I do this again next year. If I'm still alive and still around. So, we'll see. We'll see. That's a whole nother year away. So, I'll worry about it then. Till then, I'll just keep having fun posting videos and probably drinking a little bit too much while playing them. But, that's what's worked so far. Mm. Uh, I really do miss this place sometimes. But other times, I do enjoy living in Phoenix where I could actually go and get something to eat. So, But I do miss actually being able to take pictures at night in a complete doctor. So there's another airplane way up there. And that one's heading to L.A. though. That's much higher up. So I'm pretty sure you guys can see. <laughs> I keep forgetting you guys are at a wide view. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually starting to get a little bit warm out here. So I should probably call in. Again, so that's the end of the advent calendar. Let me know if you enjoyed it. If you want to see me do more of these calendar things. Because again, uh, I probably should do something for Valentine's Day. Uh, dating sim-wise, that's always funny. Uh, maybe do something for, what, St. Patrick's Day? No, for Halloween and stuff like that. Let me know if you actually enjoyed this. What videos you would like to see. Any suggestion, negative or positive, is much appreciated. Otherwise, let me just say, hopefully you're enjoying today with loved ones in a warm, comfortable environment. Uh, and I guess this is where I say goodbye, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.